Hey everybody, Dave here again with my good buddy Edward. Hey guys. Good boy. Don't you just love it when they do what they're supposed to and you don't have to tell them? Uh. <laughs> I thought we'd switch things up a little bit today. We've been doing uh, some circuit tutorials, but uh, we're going to take a little step back in the past a little bit and show you how to do combination locks using levers and circuitry. No pistons, unfortunately, though I'm sure you could incorporate them somehow. There's been a lot of uh, tutorials on YouTube about redstone circuits and how to do combination locks. It's actually a lot simpler than it seems, but uh, we wanted to take you through building one step by step so that you understand and get a really firm grasp, that's what she said, on how to do this yourself. So what we have here is another mock-up. God knows I like to do mock-ups. And uh, we have five levers attached to a door. Now when you get these combination, when you get the combination correct, the door should open. But I've got to remember what it is. Down, up, down, up, up. Voila, the door opens. Oh, I didn't know that was there. Of course you did. And then uh, when you move any of these levers, the door stays closed until you get the combination right again. This would be great for those adventure maps you guys like doing. Yeah, it would. In fact, I've, I think I've run into a few of them. There was one that had a, a wall full of switches though they probably weren't connected and only one actually had circuitry. But anyway, um, let's swing around here on the back and I'll show you what we're up against. It's actually far less complicated than it looks. Uh, it's just a series of AND gates that are all run together and the final output runs to the door. Pretty easy stuff. I'll show you how all of that works. We've got a, a second mock-up here ready to go. As you can see in the back of that, there is no circuitry. We're gonna build this all by hand together within the 15 minutes that we have. But first I'd like to show you a few basics. I'll refresh your memory about circuits if you're kind of new to Minecraft circuits or they befuddle you like they do me sometimes, as I've mentioned in the past. I am by no means a genius, so this might be helpful. For advanced users, you may want to fast forward the video a little bit. In this first model, we have um, just a redstone torch here above a block. Anytime there's a torch placed underneath the block, it powers the block above it. A redstone torch to be precise. And because the, power, uh, the block is powered, we can just place wire on top of it, and the wire will be powered as well. And, and that's that one also, thing that we're going to take advantage of. Go ahead, sorry. And that also causes problems too. If you're trying to build a complex system, you have a red torch underneath, something might be powered constantly and cause problems. Right, and we'll probably run into that just because of how condensed the circuitry is back there, but uh, we shouldn't have any issues with it. I'll make sure of it. In the second model here, we have um, a lever attached to this pillar. Of course, the block that the lever is attached to gets power when the lever is turned on and off. As you can see, there's a, a torch on the other side, and it shares the power because the block is powered. But one thing to keep in mind is, when you have an input running to a block, the input in this case is the lever, the uh, input is reversed by the torch on the opposite side. Right now, the lever is in the off position, but you can see the torch is on. When I turn the lever on, the torch is off. So it's always the opposite, and that's what you call an inverter. That's the uh, basic principle, which I have here in the third model in a slightly uh, expanded context just to make it uh, make my point in a more illustrative purpose or a more illustrative way. Apparently, articulation is not on my agenda today. Um, it's just a, a lever, which is the input, running into the inverter block. Of course, it's an inverter because there's a torch hanging on it, and it has an input. And that torch powers this red wire, which in turn powers the piston. Now, the switch is on right now. As you can see, this wire is powered. 
you see the little smoke particles coming off of it and that runs into the block and of course the torch reverses that uh, power flow so this wire over here which is fed by that torch is not powered and therefore the piston has no power but if I flip the switch off because that current is opposite down here the piston extends and we have power so basically again all we're doing is reversing the flow of the, uh, the, the current and that plays a, a part in AND gates as well which is here in this uh, fourth model and this is the most advanced piece of technology, if you even want to call it that, that we'll be using in this project. This AND gate basically works in the manner that when both of these switches are in the ON position, you'll receive power on the other end. In other words, if this is ON and this is ON, then you get power. The concept behind this may seem a little complicated at first, but it's really not. These switches here power the redstone, which of course feed into these inverter blocks. Remember the power is reversed. And anytime either of these torches are on, the redstone in the center gets powered, which feeds this torch here. So the power is inverted twice, once going into the blocks here, and then the second time going into this torch. And the torch feeds the wire which then of course feeds the piston. So anytime these switches are turned off, one of these torches, which is reversed, the current flow anyway, the redstone is powered and the torch is unpowered because it's opposite again. So when either of those are on, that wire is powered and we can't get power out there, but if they're both off, or both on, sorry, then we get power. That's how an AND gate works and that's what we'll be doing uh, over here when we build this out.